In this problem, we're told that a force necessary to keep an object moving in a circle is equal to some dimensionless constant alpha times the mass of the object to some power q times the radius of the circular motion to some power p times the speed that the object is moving to some power n. I'm going to draw a picture of this because, well, if you're not drawing a picture, are you really doing a physics problem? I think not. So we have some object at some mass m, it's moving in a circle of radius r, and it has some velocity uh, v, which is a vector with some speed v. I know that the dimension of force is equal to a mass times a length divided by a time squared. So that's going to be equal to the dimension of the entire right side of that equation. And since dimensions multiply like scalars, that's the dimension of each one separately. Dimension of r to the p, dimension of speed to the n. And again, like scalars, that means the dimension of m to the q is equal to the dimension of m to the q power. I was told this is dimensionless, so I represent dimensionless quantities as the number one. And so this is the dimension of m to the q power times the dimension of r to the p power times the dimension of v to the n power. The dimension of mass is just mass to the q. The dimension of radius is a length, that's to the p. And the dimension of velocity is a length per time, and that's to the n power. So that is equal to mass to the q, the length to the p plus n, since I have a length to the p power and a length to the n power, all divided by time to the n power. And this must equal the dimension of force, which we know from above is a mass to the first power, length to the first power, divided by time to the second power. And since I have length and mass as both numerators and the time in the denominator, I can set the powers equal to each other. I have this power is equal to this, etc. So looking at the mass, that tells us that q is equal to one. Looking at the length, that tells us that p plus n is equal to one and looking at the time is telling us that n is equal to two. So q is one, n is two, and if I put n into the above, I get p plus two equals one, or p is equal to negative one. Now I go back to my original problem and I can substitute in for q is one, r uh, p is equal to negative one, and n is equal to two. So that means our force is equal to some constant times mass times v squared divided by r. And that is how we can use dimensional analysis to find the powers that relate certain quantities to others.